All right, Mitch, welcome back to the channel. We are going to talk a little bit uh, about the power rankings, the KFL ball power rankings after, after week two, going into week three. Uh, for everybody, just a little bit fun. I'm going to do a snakehead bait video coming up here really quickly um, as well this morning um, before heading out. And um, lots of stuff going down, lots of stuff going down. It is fun to watch people just come off the rails on social media when shit don't go their way or someone says something or someone you know you know everyone everything's a debate on on everything's a debate on social media you guys know that um i had a uh, uh mate pose a question on one of the other videos about the crypto cast yes we will be bringing the crypto cast back for those of you who are not familiar with the crypto cast crypto cast was a channel that we had really going into covid and through COVID, I think it ended with like fifty six or fifty eight thousand subscribers. It was it was pretty it was pretty awesome, um, which involved cryptocurrency and fishing at the same time, talking crypto on the water while fishing, which was great. Um, and um, hopefully, we're going to bring that back um, because that channel, obviously, because of the number of subscribers, you guys know how YouTube works. Um, this channel doesn't have live stream, so we can't live stream yet. Um, from this channel on the water, uh, hopefully we will at some point. But you know, the, you, you, YouTube's algorithm and, and all that good stuff plays its part as to when you can start to actually live stream. We'll do some other stuff oh, coming up for CryptoCast. There's a kayak being built out solely for that, electronically wired solely for content. Not it. Re it's really more like a videography platform, not really, f you know, necessarily for. Uh, you know, fishing. You certainly would probably wouldn't want to fish in a tournament with all the stuff that is being loaded on on and wired up for that um, for that kayak with drones and um, a lot of other cameras. Uh, Pixio, um, which is really awesome. You should check that out. Anybody who's interested in that kind of stuff um, for a 360 um, camera. But that's so that's where we're at. I'll do a video on the CryptoCast update for that. It was really really fun. It's basically solely about. Uh, crypto paying you to fish meaning you basically were we buy crypto we buy crypto at the ramp and we fish during the day we talk crypto we talk fishing and then at the end of the day we get off the water we sell our crypto and it basically the, the basic uh um nut of it is you got paid to go fishing um that's what that premise of that whole channel was and we had a great sponsor but that sponsor has then gotten bought crypto's had a lot of consolidation that sponsor has been bought now um so, and then the new company who, who bought them, uh, that leveraged trading exchange for crypto, um, you know, doesn't do sponsorships, doesn't do, you know, any, any, of, any of that stuff. It's just not in their model. So that's, that's how it goes. So KFL going post week two, going into uh, week three, almost like the post spawn, if you think about it. Um, just so much has happened. You got two and O teams, you got one on one teams, you got... 0 and 1 teams, right? And 0 and 2 teams. That's just how it works. Um, so the surprises, surprises so far after week two, obviously, is the Lone Star Bandits and them losing on home water. That's a big deal. They're 0 and 2. And then they're on the road this week to Arkansas, I think. They're on the road to Arkansas. Um, that's going to be a, a crazy matchup, um, really, if you think about it. Long perspective. I don't know if it's going to be a crazy matchup in terms of Competition, as much as it could be a crazy matchup, is if the Bandits lose and they go 0 and 3, that, you know, that's, I mean, Bandits have been a perennial, like, um, you know, powerhouse, really, like the Massachusetts Maulers um, from different divisions um, throughout the first year of, of the KFL. So it's kind of interesting. But, you know, that's the way social media works. Like, you can, you know, I, you know people get tread me and, and it's fine. I, I, for, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about. I probably don't. Uh, I'm just another schmuck on YouTube and on social media like everybody else like okay i said so you know i don't take any of it seriously it's all fun for me if someone gets if someone gets twisted over stuff they're the they're they're the ones who have the problem like it's just fishing like and if you're taking it really so uber seriously that you're getting you're not having fun doing it you're the one with the problem like and if you're out like you know making just ridiculous accusations and assertions and assumptions and all, all that stuff on your on social media like you better be able to back it up you know and that's the way i look at it. that's like real life that's like big boy pants if you're gonna make accusations about people 
or, you know, or insinuate that people are doing something nefarious or, you know, shady, you better be able to back it up because people, people are going to fight you. Like, they're going to be like, look, you know, at least people, the rational people are going to be like, you know, dude, you know, so a lot of people didn't like the first week one recap. Um, you know, I got a lot of hate. It's great. I, you know, hate sometimes on social media, you got to understand a lot of people on, on content providers, they love the hate as much as they love the joy. Okay. Because it helps them likes, hearts, hates, whatever it is, it helps them in their, in their algorithms. And a lot of people don't understand that's like the power of content providers and, and their auger and their, and their, um, eyeballs, people watching that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and then, you know, so I think this week's a kind of an aspect. Now you really, really get into with the KFL, like the importance of an owner. What's an owner? Is an owner a player or is an owner someone who manages the players in terms of player selection, location of event, okay? What's going to go down with the away team? How are you going to host the away team, right? Camaraderie, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like how, all that comes falls under the owner, right? And, he, and the owner originally picked eight players. Remember, the KFL is eight players, okay? Um, and you can have no more than eight players on your roster at one time. And only four can be on the water at one time in an event, which is really interesting, okay? Because before we get into the power rankings after week two um, that I posted on my personal page, which I don't normally do, but I did. Because um, that's just me. Um because it's all fun, um, and you know, no one in my no one in my personal feed. Take, I don't think even competitive um, tournament anglers that are in my personal feed. Um, I don't think take it all that serious. Like, get mental over this stuff. Um, I think they understand the joy of fishing. Um, but this weekend's really, really interesting. In terms of an owner perspective, if you put yourself in that perspective, or if you're looking at picking fantasy, or if you're looking at making some side bets, which I've been known to do, um, on matches, okay, is because Connecticut and Pennsylvania both have uh, two matches this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. How is that going to impact the Northeast, okay, divisions, right? Because you've got... Two squads having to field eight anglers this weekend. How is that? Are guys going to double dip? Are guys going to fit? You know what I'm saying? Like how do you, on two different bodies of water, home games, away games. You've got travel in between. So you're playing a game. Maybe you're playing a game at home. And then you've got to turn around and travel wherever you're traveling to. In this case, Connecticut or um, it's the other one. Um, it's Connecticut, Pennsylvania. Um, and I think Pennsylvania or Connecticut's against Bay State. Um, Pennsylvania's against the New York Empire, and then Pennsylvania is against Connecticut. Okay, so all the different bodies of water, from what I understand. So you know, what do you do? Do you, do you double up on the same squad four four on Saturday, four on Sunday? You go with four anglers on Saturday, and then four different anglers on Sunday. It appears as if Nate Hall with Pennsylvania Brombacks is fishing both of the Pennsylvania Brombacks events this weekend, which is awesome for Pennsylvania. They're 0-1. They dropped their first game to Pennsylvania Doom. I mean, not to Delaware Doom. Um, and away, they dropped it away on the ponds of Delaware. I don't think Nate Hall fished that event. Okay, Nate Hall, he's a hammer from Pennsylvania. Okay, so he fishes in a lot of some of the Pennsylvania series is there. He's, I think he's won a KBF, maybe won two KBF events. He's a hammer. People don't talk about him a lot. Probably at all. Probably should. I always talk about this, yo. Everybody knows who the hammers are. The team with the most "quote unquote" hammers in kayak, the kayak fishing community. If you don't know anything about kayak, kayak fishing, okay, and you just got into it yesterday, the people's names who are going to pop out the most outside of Drew Gregory, who this year is not on a KFL team. Who knows? Maybe next year he has his own team, okay? Because word is there's going to be a team from Ohio next year, okay? So, and I think Drew lives in Ohio. Um, so we'll see about that. KFL gets him. Massive get for the KFL. But, you know, you have to look at Tennessee Shiners are stacked with just about every notable, I mean, person from KBF or Hobie or any of that stuff that you may come across in terms of followers on social media maybe or wins or tournament, tournament champions appearances or KBF national appearances. 
you got people in that squad that, I mean, are just hammers, right? Um, and yet they're one and one, and they could be one and two going into this weekend. Um, they're going, they're playing the Alabama Hammers this weekend with a limited um, roster, which means, and they just tr they just uh, released Christine Fisher, who's a hammer. Everybody knows her. I mean, she's in freaking KBF, KBF trail. She's hot in the Hobie trail. Um, she's on the Abu Garcia freaking um, roll video, um, commercial video on M MLF, I think. You know, she's one of the featured anglers in that for Abu Garcia. Um, they released her because she's going to go to Pan Am and all the international kayaking events coming up here um, summer, so she's not available. So they've had to replace her. Teams have had to, like, do other things, like, um, you know, um, and make those adjustments. And that's what owners have to pretty much do in the KFL, right? That's what's, that's the part about it is what players are you putting on the water? Um, and so that's an interesting dynamic if you're looking for all these things that factor into, you know, um, fantasy, if you're playing fantasy. Um, but if you're playing KFL ball, okay, so – that's what my power rankings are about, is I've taken, it's very similar to what Bill James did for Moneyball, but if you're familiar with that movie, if not, check that movie out. It's pretty good. Um, but more crypto side, because everybody knows from being an on-chain crypto analyst and doing what I do outside of fishing um, and cryptocurrency and all of those things, you could take the analytics and the metrics for crypto, okay, and apply it to the KFL in terms of the data metrics that you use in an algorithm, sort of speak, um, to produce your power, to produce how what how you want your rankings skewed. What's more important to you? To a fundamental person doing a power ranking or someone just doing, ask them, explain to, have them explain to you how they're doing their power ranking. Or how did you come up with your over under on the match this weekend? How'd you come up with someone being favored by nine inches? How'd you do that? You just pull that out of your ass? Or did you actually create a program to run analytics and metrics to come up with that number? And again, sample size is small, mates. Okay? You're only in week three. Okay? So people that are getting all hot and heated or whatever because, you know, somebody didn't rank their team in the top five or the top ten, go out there on the water and win. Go out there and change it up. Win. You know, do what, do what Granite State's done. Do what the Florida Copperheads have done or the Kuzi Kingfishers. Win. That's all you have to do. You want to change every paradigm in any sports? Win. That's it. However you do it, that's it. Just don't sandbag, okay? But however you do it, you know, so right now, okay, so how, how, how are the power rankings done? You're taking a lot of things, not only the wins and losses, not only the teams that you're playing, not only the records of the teams you're playing, okay? So right now, people are like, right now, for example, if you're, if you're in going into week three, um, you know, and in the first two weeks, you beat two teams that haven't won a match yet, that's going to lower your power ranking because you haven't beaten anybody as far as the computers, the the... Um, algorithms concern, okay? Because, for example, they, they didn't win, they didn't catch enough length to win their game. May, maybe they had a really bad showing, okay? Which lowers your overall season length, okay, in an algorithm. Okay, for example, New York Empire. New York Empire had 29 inches the first week and then came back with, um, with a, you know, I, can't, I don't remember what it was, but somewhere a little less than 200 inches, I think, on Lake Champlain, um, or maybe more. Um, so that, that boom, okay? But they're still carrying that 29 spot compared to everybody else who a team who may be one and one like the New York Empire who had 130 week one, 160 week two, but they're still one and one, they still caught that length. So there's all, and plus, so you factor in your record, factor in your opponent's record coming up, you factor in the fact that, for example, maybe you just won two home games and now you got two away games to go to. Okay, and so taking last year's numbers, what are the what's the winning percentage of teams on the road? You plug that in, okay, and so you create the analytical data that you want to come out in the power rankings. 
That's how you do it. You can add, delete. You know, some things are, are more meaningful than others. You know, um, in terms of how you do it, but you just don't pull the shit out of your ass. Like, you've got to be able to back it up and justify what you're talking about. Like, you know, I mean, or or not. <laughs> like, like a lot of people on YouTube. Um, all the other schmucks like me on YouTube. Um, you know, it's no different than picking a stock, picking a crypto, and telling people that it's, it's going to go higher. And it might not go higher. And, like, it's no different than picking a team and that team doesn't perform. Or that team doesn't have enough anglers to participate. Or that team has so many anglers that are fishing KBF and Hobie that they can't even put their best four on the water at the same time because you have companion or competing events happening the same weekend, which is what you're going to have coming up with Hobie uh, on um, in New Hampshire uh, later this month, Hobie in Susquehanna in July, KBF, Percy Priest outside Nashville, then... Um, and I'm sure where KBF is going to be in August, but but I mean, and then they're they're up in New Hampshire, I think, in September or maybe in August. I don't know. Um, but you're going to that that's going to, that can impact Northeast anglers. They're they're going to play those big events, the money events, right? Um, and so in terms of the power rankings, dispute it, don't dispute it, accept it, bash it, hate it, love it, whatever you want to do. It is what it is. And the Florida Copperheads are the number one team in the power rankings. Okay, and, and so people will say, well, how the hell, well, oh my God, how the hell did you come up with that? That's just bullshit, blah, blah, blah. Well, okay, they just did something with length, okay? And it's not just length as a team, okay? Okay, you get that. The team length is the top 10 bass, okay? That's your limit, 10 bass, right? But if the team as a whole, outside of its top 10, is catching all limits as players and they're loading that into their fantasy that factors it's not just your top 10 score it's not just the top 10 because your goal is to determine the power of a team okay and so you know maybe you've got an angler who maybe you've got an angler on the water who caught 15 15 um, inch bats and none of his bass got registered in the top 10 for the team. That could have happened in a place like Fairfield, right? The, the outlaws against the uh, bandits last week or the outlaws won. That certainly could have happened. So the, anglers, so the anglers could be on fish as a team. They're starting four, okay? And then there's their top 10 taken from the four that come to the overall win or loss for the team. But that doesn't diminish. You could have a team that lost, that simply lost because, who lost, but caught more fish then the opposition, right? But they didn't catch enough length, right? The other team may have caught less fish, but what they caught were bigger uh, were, long, um, were bigger bass in terms of length. So that determines the win, okay? But that doesn't determine your power ranking, okay? Okay, because the power ranking takes into effect all of the fish caught by the players active on the day. So, so which team? Which team is more? What, te what team would you think? is set up better when if they have four anglers on the water and only one angler carried them in the match for the most part. So 80% of their scorable bass came from one angler of the four and then this weekend that angler's not participating. What does that do to the actual power of that squad? Diminishes it. Okay? And so you've got to understand that. That's what the Tennessee Shiners are going the problem they're having right now is their roster is changing in and out, and consistency, you don't really have. On paper, they're the they're the best squad in the KFL. Like, on paper, if you just look going back. But that's not what power rankings are. Power rankings are also forward-looking. Okay? And so you want to factor that into. So we got Florida Copperheads at number one in the power rankings after week two. Granite State sticks very, very narrowly behind the Florida Copperheads. Followed by the Kusha King Fishers. Okay? Now, here's where the auger, here's where the data and the metrics and the analytics, thank you, Bill James, kind of deviates. Tennessee Shiners are actually at one and one and fourth. But the analytics and the, the analytics of that doesn't reflect what's happening real time on that team. I they only have two anglers listed on the KFL page as competing this weekend. Now that could change. 
But if you're going two anglers against four, you're, this is what's going to happen in the power ranking. Even if they win, okay, which is great, you only have two anglers. So your overall length as a team is impacted by that. So they could win, still win. I don't, I don't know. I think it's highly unlikely. I mean, I think they're, they're playing the Alabama Hammers on the road, I think. Um, you're only going to have the total length of those two anglers to factor in for the power rankings for next week. So Tennessee's going to drop. They could win the game and go 2-1 and one and drop significantly in the power rankings because they only have two anglers fishing. That's what a power ranking is, mates. Like, it's not just, oh, I think they're better. I think that these are who I think the top 10 teams are. Okay? Okay, that's not power ranking. That's a top team ranking based on you and your, like, opinion. Nothing analytical and nothing metric-wise. Okay? And so then we got Arkansas Hogs, Motor City, Oklahoma Outlaws coming at uh, 5, 6, 7. Get this. The the data and the metrics have the Massachusetts Maulers at number 8, power ranking 8. Rhode Island Rebels, power ranking 9. Okay? Above the Indy Knights, who are at 10. And Maniacs at 11. And Reapers and Carolina Casters, who are right there tied with the same number um, at 12. How can a team that's 0-1, right? Schedule. Schedule. Their schedule going forward. Who are they playing against? What's the record of the teams left remaining on their roster that they're having to play? Currently, as it stands, which changes every week. So a team can get hot which will impact power rankings. The length of which they caught, the differential between their loss, how, where they, you know, they could have put up, they could have put up 192 inches in week one and lost. They still put up 192 inches, which is more than some teams put up in two weeks, right? So all of that, okay? You've got the individual stats of people. So that's how it factors in. So, so people need to understand a, little, a, a lot about analytics and metrics and what you're using as parameter metrics to deviate what a, a power ranking is versus just over who you think is a better team on paper or who you like or you don't like in the league. That's what happens. Is there The complaint right now for a lot of people is the league is skewed to certain teams and players being focused on, being, you know, whatever, and there's hate to other players against players, you know, teams located in different regions and all that stuff. All you can do is win. People can say whatever they want about cocky, whatever, but if you back it up and you win, okay. You know, you know what you don't want to have, what you don't want to have is have the Tennessee Vol effect. You don't want to be running the running the gamut in this league and and all and getting cocky. I mean, I, I'm not throwing shade on the Vols. That's my team. I love the Vols in Maryland. Those are my teams, right? Like everybody knows that about me. Mostly football. But baseball, okay. Um, they shit the bed in the College World Series. There's no way about it. Notre Dame kicked their ass. Like, two out of three games. Like, pitching, hitting, base run, everything. And that's what you... So, they, Tennessee, number one for most of the season. Won the SEC championship. Okay? People anointed them to go to the Omaha. And guess what? They got their ass beat. Like, there's no way other to describe it. And that can happen to a team... In the KFL, they can go all the way through the season and then, or whatever or have a great record. And on, on the record, on paper, they look like, oh, man, they're going to win their playoff matchup. But they got to go on the road somewhere. Okay? They got to go to a place like Florida, a place like Michigan, Texas, if that happens. Okay? Well, then, you know, you got to have enough players on those rosters to be able to, to, be able to do that. Field an awesome travel team plus an awesome home local team. So how you build out your team, I, I, look, I, look, Totally independent, totally separated, not competing in the KFL. People that know, know that I was going to be an owner for a Maryland team for the KFL. Shit went down, okay? There are egos involved in kayak fishing like everything else. Sometimes there's a lot more ego involved. I mean, that's just the reality of, of what it what it is. And who, who as an owner, you put your trust and hands in. Me, I made the mistake of putting my trust in my, you know, in someone who I thought was a uh, tournament hammer. Okay, like, but yet that doesn't mean that, you know, that doesn't mean that they would perform well or better than a local guy who's never competed in t- kayak tournaments. Um, doesn't mean, you know, sometimes when you put all that stuff together, it may or may not work. It may or may not work. People may be sensitive. People may want to be able to control the team. People may want to pick your roster for you. 
People want to, maybe want to fight with you on who's on the team, who's not going to be on the team. Like all that stuff. And trust me, I got tons of tons of back juice on the headaches. And we never even got to the season, okay, of just dealing with that stuff. So whoever the owners are, man, that's, that's the thing that's on their shoulders. They got to put a team on the water every weekend. Connecticut's not this weekend. I don't think so. I mean, I will double check. Connecticut's putting two separate squads in their matches this weekend. So all eight of their anglers are going to be on the water this weekend in home and away matches. Okay? So no one's double dipping, right, in terms of playing two game, two, uh, two matches in a row over the weekend. That could, I mean, that's going to shape up a lot of things. You've got week three, you've got anglers that are coming in here in the KFL that haven't fished a game, haven't fished a match yet. Okay? Because you got teams that had buys last week. So, so that's gonna that's gonna factor in to um, how a team performs, and that, that's why you want to watch it, Paige. You don't want to like you don't you don't want to um, you know you don't want to overthink this. You don't want to like get all upset about it. You don't want to like you know it, it, people just get ridiculous. And I, personally, I don't care. Like I'm like you know I, I'm just I, again I just do commentary because on things that I like, whether it be crypto, um, small small bass fishing. And, and KFL, KBF, and all that kind of stuff. It's just fun, you know, especially through COVID. It's been awesome, like, to just be able to, like, take a step back from everything else and, 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 and you know, immerse yourself in kind of things, get to know some people, make new friends, all that kind of stuff, create a little bit, you know. I mean, that's the problem that the people in the league need to understand is the, the KFL hierarchy wants to create drama, okay? They want to throw people under the bus on their live streams. They want to create so there's more people coming into their channels. That's just business, mates. That's just that's just how it is. They need to get people. I think they broke a thousand subscribers on YouTube this last week for for the Motion Sports Network. That's what they're about. I mean, that's not. Don't take it personal. Like you know, I'm gonna take it personal. My name gets dropped. My name gets dropped in a freaking live stream last night. I'm not taking it personally. I mean, you know, whether they know what they're talking about or not, you know, like. Because the per- nine times out of ten, the person dropping my name doesn't know me. Like, you know, never fished with me, doesn't know me, right? Never had a beer with me, whatever. So I, I'm not going to take that person who doesn't know me. As opposed to someone who's known me for ten, five, ten years who, you know, drops shade or, 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 or throws me under the bus or, or makes some crazy outlandish insinuation on a live stream. Um, I can't. You know what I mean? That take that personal, like, I, because I'd be like, bro, like, you know what? What happened to our relationship, right? Because that's what it's really, really about. So matchups for week three. What's the lock, right? Vegas. What's the lock? The lock's probably Kuza against the Tar Heel Lunkers. Tar Heel Lunkers are zero two. You know, haven't really put it together yet. Um, that's probably the lock. I, I can't think of another game where I think that there's just you know, uh, massive potential in terms of dropping, you know, dropping a C note on a game. Um, you know, I mean, this is going to be a lot of close games. I mean, the Bandits have a lot to prove by against Arkansas. Arkansas has got Cody Milton, and they're stacked. Um, the Shiners are going to Alabama. Um, I would put, I would probably place my bet on Alabama Hammers winning that matchup this time around if they if Shiners only have two anglers. Um, the one match that I one match I'm most interested in this week. Well, there's two. The first match is a, on a, on just a competitive angler basis. Massachusetts Maulers against the Rhode Island Rebels. One, they got rivalries going back. These guys have all fished against each other. They've all fished the water, okay, at one time or another. Um, my guesstimation, I think that's going to be an uber competitive freaking match. So I think that should be carried on the live stream on Saturday. If KFL is going to carry an event with the anglers, they they need to get those guys the capability of having live stream. Um, and the league should look into that. The league actually should invest in these teams um, with the uh, technology to have better than just someone's cell phone for um, for their lot for their live stream feed. I mean, I really do. I think they need to make that investment if they're serious about this league really taking off because I think that's where the juice is. 
That's what that's what's going to attract people. The drama is all great and all, and there's nothing else going on. There's no other events going on. That drama is all great. Um, the other one is Granite State against the Maniacs. Just because, man, this guys all talk a lot of shit. It's kind of great. I love it. Like, I mean, um, in terms of rivalry, I think it's all good. I don't think it's personal. I think it's just good fun. Um, so I want to see what 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 happens what happens with that and what the dynamic of that match is. But that's the power rankings. Okay, that's the power rankings I got. Um, just me, you know, my opinion. Just a schmuck on YouTube or a schmuck on a kayak or a schmuck on the back of a boat. Um, and so everybody's got an opinion, right? But remember, you know, life is just the stuff that happens when you're not fishing. So don't take it, don't take any of it personally, no matter what, whether you're out there. Um, just get out there. Um, again, check out KFL, check out, um, Motion Sports Network. And a lot of the teams, by the way, if you pick a particular team, I think some of the teams are actually being carried on their own networks, which is kind of cool. Um, so if there's a game match you, you particularly want to follow or like on a, on a particular body of water that you might be fishing coming up, tune in a live stream and watch these guys fish on, you know, on, on, uh, on these, on these, um, fisheries. If, if, if you're going to be fishing those, um, in the future, but all in all, I look forward to week three. Hope everybody's going to, um, you know, create some noise, um, create some drama. Hope everybody's enjoyed the stream today. You can always hit me up, hit me up with a message. Um, going snakehead fishing later on today. So I'm going to do a really quick video. You can check this video out on these baits. Um, throwing for snakeheads. If you want, do me a favor, like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts. If you'd like me to cover anything, let me know. Thanks, mates.